This conference will now be recorded. Very good morning, students. We have been discussing previous questions from J main's papers. So today we'll complete the J main's paper 2021 22nd July shift. This conference will now be recorded. Very good morning, students. We have been discussing previous year's questions from J Men's papers. So we were discussing questions from J Men's paper 2021 22nd. The test, like, or the exam happened on 22nd July, SIP 2. We'll be completing this question paper today by this session so let us start our discussions so the first question says the position of the center of mass of a uniform semicircular where this conference will now be recorded very good morning students welcome to the previous questions discussions we have been discussing questions from j men's paper 2021 that happens on 22nd july ship 2 so today we'll be completing this question paper and then we'll move on to some other paper of the same year okay so let us read this first question and try to solve it. The first question says the position of the center of mass of a uniform circular wire of radius capital R placed in XY plane with its center at the origin and the line of joining its end as X axis is given by 0 comma x r by pi then the value of x is dash so look you have to find out the position of the center of mass of a semicircular wire and the semicircular wire is placed in the xy plane so this is something like this It is somewhat like this and see this you can treat as x-axis so the center of this semicircular wire is actually at the origin and see this is the y-axis okay something like this all right so you have to find out the position of the center of mass and so here you can see from the given of given coordinate as well as by the symmetry you can understand that the center of mass will be lying on the y-axis because by symmetry the center of mass generally lies towards the greater mass okay actually on the x-axis you have lesser mass or uh, like by symmetry you can get the center of mass somewhere on the y-axis so that's why x coordinate of the center of mass will be zero so what we have to find out we have to find out the y coordinate so to find out that you can directly remember the formula to solve this kind of problem but if you don't know how to find out and you want to learn how to derive center of mass coordinate of a semicircular ring then let us derive that okay so let me take an elementary 
length dx. Okay, elementary length dx. See, this is from the center at r. See, this is suppose this is the point. Okay, so this is the point. This is angle d theta. This is theta. So at an angle theta plus d theta, I have this. Actually, you can think that this is this is r. So this elementary length I have considered out of this ring dx. Okay. And suppose this element has mass dm. So we have to find out the y coordinate. So y c m. See y c o m. According to the formula, we have to write one over m. M is the total mass of the ring, semicircular ring, or where y dm so what is dm and what is y the, those things we will be writing see y is the see if this is the point so this point p suppose this point has got both x and y coordinate i have just considered a, an elementary length dx okay all right so we know from here we will get both x and dx so you look here dx will be so if if we say this is dy actually this is suppose this is y at distance y i have considered considered an element of dx okay so that y can be written as r sin theta okay and this dx length this can be written as r of cos of theta okay so this is the distance or height or the y coordinate and x coordinate will be r theta okay so what will be the mass of this element that is dm is equal to mass per unit length of the ring or where let us take that is lambda into dx okay so what is lambda if the mass of the wire is capital m then i can write capital m by pi r mass of the semicircular ring is capital m and this is the length okay perimeter of the semicircle so i'll put it here and in place of dx i'll write r cos theta I'm sorry, this is actually this dx is dx is r d theta. I'm sorry, this is not r cos theta. This is r d theta. See, this coordinate is r d theta. X coordinate, okay? X coordinate will be r d theta. So dx will be r d theta actually r d theta so we'll put it here r d theta so this are these are cancel out i get m by pi into d theta this is actually mass dm okay mass dm Alright, so now we can put it here. So you look, this is m 
here y is equal to r sin theta dm i can write m by pi into d theta okay so i have got see m m actually cancels out from both numerator and denominator so i have r by pi and then this is sin theta d theta okay this was for this elementary element but if we want to see for the whole then i have to take the limit so limit see this theta will be actually zero theta will be zero here and pi here so that the whole thing will be covered so i have to write zero to pi okay now see sin theta integration will be minus of cos theta minus of cos theta and limit we have to take zero to pi so this will give you two so two r by pi okay so look i have got this x r by pi if i compare with this then x will be two so this is the answer for this question okay so let us go to the next problem so this problem says a ray of light passing through a prism surface prism surface minimum deviation okay so prism surface at minimum deviation okay so i have a prism like this so triangular prism we can just consider oh, i'm sorry better to take nice figure okay this is a prism question says a light passes through a prism prism refractive index of the material of the prism is given as square root of 3 and the prism is at minimum deviation it is found that the angle of incidence so let us say this is the perpendicular so angle of incidence is this one sorry angle of incidence is like this okay this is angle of incidence i is double the angle of refraction within the prism so within the prism see at minimum angle of deviation this ray will be actually parallel parallel to the base parallel to the base right this we know from the properties of minimum angle of deviation right here if this is a perpendicular this will be one angle of refraction suppose r1 and sorry this is r2 and here this angle is r1 okay and then it will actually emerge out like this okay this is angle of emergence then the angle of prism is dash so you have to find out what is angle of prism a is equal to so what is the condition that angle of incidence i is twice of r this is what is given okay see at minimum angle of deviation r1 will be equal to r2 okay this is this is one condition that we know now what else given it is found that the angle of incidence i is double up the angle of refraction within the prism that is fine now you have to find out the angle of prism so we know 
that a is equal to r1 plus r2 if r1 is equal to r2 then i can write r is equal to a by 2 because this will be 2r so this will give so this is at minimum angle of deviation right now we have got r here we have we have got i here let us apply the snell's law and see what is happening so so if we apply snell's law at this ab surface interface so applying snell's law at ab interface what we can write one sine of i that is, is equal to square root of 3 sine of r right now we'll write this r in terms of in terms of a okay and this is also see sine i let me write it here so sine i let me write as sine 2r sine 2r and this is sine r right so this i can write actually 2 into sine r and cos r this i can write sine r itself so this sine r and this sine r will cancel each other so what we get cos of r is equal to cos of r is equal to root 3 by 2 okay so this implies r will be 30 degree see r is equal to a by cos of just a minute yes this is fine i is equal to 2r that is also fine so cos r cos r is equal to root 3 by 2 yes this is fine yes so this is r and r means a by 2 right so a by 2 is 30 degree right so what will be a a will be 60 degree so what is the angle of prism then so angle of prism will be 60 degree so here it is 60 here in degrees let us go to the next problem and try to solve it so this question says the center of a wheel of a acha, center of a wheel rolling on a plane surface moves with speed rolling actually here it is rolling with a speed v0 a particle on the rim of the wheel at the same level as the center of as center will be moving at speed square root of x into v0 then what is the value of x let me explain with the diagram see suppose this is a wheel okay which is rolling on the floor okay so it is given that the center moves so center will have only translational motion and with velocity v0 it is given a particle on the rim on the same level of the center suppose it is here or somewhere here okay so the rim since the rim is actually since it is rolling rolling means rotation 
plus translation right rotation plus translation is rolling that means the, the end points of the ring is actually having rotational velocity omega suppose so it is it is actually having ro rotational motion as well as translation but center of mass will only translate so if i just consider this point here this particle on the rim will have two velocities one along the forward direction which is the translational velocity and that will be the same as the center of mass and the other one will be r omega this is this is due to the rotational velocity okay or rotational motion this is due to rotational motion and by default we'll take here that the rolling is happening is pure rolling rolling is pure pure rolling means rolling without slipping without slipping so in case of rolling without slipping we can write v naught is equal to r omega now see the resultant of these two velocities of this particle we have to find out the speed of the particle with which it is moving okay so this will be some where this direction okay or if the particle is here so r omega will be in this direction v naught will be in this direction so this will be this way okay this is suppose the v velocity okay look then the magnitude of that v velocity will be square root of v naught square plus r omega whole square as i said for a pure rolling or rolling without clipping we'll have this condition r omega is equal to v naught we'll put it there by the way this r is the radius of the wheel or the or the circular path so it will be v naught square plus v naught square so square root of 2 into v naught so this is the speed with which with which a point on the rim will move so here value of x will be 2 all right so this is the answer for this question now let us go to the next problem so this is from Jenner diet so this is a very very important application of Jenner diode this is voltage regulation this is circuit of voltage regulator voltage regulator so voltage regulator as you know voltage at the back breakdown condition voltage across the Jenner diode will not change okay so you look here the circuit this is Jenner diode this is some resistance which we have connected okay so to have our desired current through the Jenner diode maximum current and this is RL RL is the load resistance across which the voltage will be taken as the regulated voltage and this voltage will be exactly equal to the general voltage okay general voltage across the general diode anyway let us now read the question in a given circuit diagram a 5 volt general diode that means vz is 5 volt okay along with the series resistance is connected across 50 volt power supply so this is actually series resistance this one series resistance this is load resistance rl generally this is denoted by rs anyway here it is denoted by r only all right the minimum value of 
the resistance required. So this resistance, we have to find out the minimum value of this resistance if the maximum general current is 90 milliampere and that resistance will be dash ohm. So you have to find out the value of this R. This is very, very important while you go to the laboratory. You have to actually choose according to the given general diode. You have to choose the series resistance to make the voltage regulator or to do, do this experiment. So the input power supply is of 50 volt, right? So if I just see this figure here, the current total current up to here, it is fine, right? After that, the current is actually getting divided into two. I2, which will be passing through the RL, and I1, these are two different currents. So I can write I is equal to I1 plus I2. That is obvious. Now, it uh, like see, if the voltage drop across this, we have to find out. Okay, so, you know, I can actually do one thing. I can find out what is I1. Okay, so wh what is I1? I can find out what is I, I have to find out. So what is I actually? What is I? I is actually the voltage, see, I is actually V by R. Okay, up to here, we can say that. So V by R is equal to I1 plus I2, right? So I can write actually V divided by I1 plus I2 is equal to R. What is this I2 and what is this I1? I1 is actually the general current that will be general voltage. Okay, that is actually given. No need to worry about that. This much milliampere that is given. I1 is given. So I2 is actually see VL or VZ divided by RL this much. Okay, VZ divided by RL. Okay. I think I have done one small mistake over here. So since this is the voltage drop across the resistor or this one, I have to write V minus VZ. That will be actually total current, V minus VZ. Okay. All right, look this here. V minus VZ divided by, this will be V minus VZ. Here, this is I1, let, let us keep like that. And this is VZ by RL. VZ by RL. Okay, this is equal to R. Now see, I have this expression. R is equal to V minus VZ divided by I1 plus VZ by RL. So to make this current maximum, okay? To make this current maximum, this RL has to be very, very large actually. Let me tell you here, if you have to make this current maximum, so this resistance has to be as good as infinity. Okay. So, in fact, this I2 can be taken as negligible. Okay, negligible. So what I can write then, 
if I neglect this one, this current, because this will be as good as infinity to make the general current maximum. Okay. To have IZ max maximum. Okay. IZ max RL has to be infinity. So my expression becomes V minus VZ divided by I1 or IZ. Okay. IZ is the current through the Jenner. So V is 50, VZ is 5 divided by this milli 10 to the power minus 3 milli ampere. So from here I can find So this will be in a home. So this is two. So it will be 500 ohm. So this is the question answer. Okay. So the series resistance has to be. So if you don't do this much. Okay. Let me just clean everything. Before that, let me explain once again what I have done. See the total current I have divided into two. One will go through the general. Another one will go through the load resistance. So Bz is equal to I L into R. Okay, from there I can find out what is I2. That is Bz by R L. Okay. Now I1. See total I will be actually V minus Bz by R because this much drop is happening across the zener. So V minus Bz. V is given 50 minus Bz divided by R. That is the total current. Now here if this general current has to be maximum, then you have to see you have to take this load resistance as good as infinity. So there will be very negligible current passing through the RL. So I can write then V minus Vz divided by IZ. IZ is given as 90 milliampere. So I get R is equal to 500 ohm. See, we would have done directly without knowing anything. We can directly write V minus Vz divided by Iz. Okay, to get R. This will actually give the answer. I have done elaborately to make you understand why this formula comes. Okay, all right. So this answer will be 500 ohm. Now this question says the area of cross section of a railway track is given. So area of cross section is given as 0.01 meter square. That means 10 to the power minus 2 meter square. The temperature variation is delta T is equal to 10 degree centigrade. Coefficient of linear expansion is given as Alpha is equal to 10 to the power minus 5 per degree centigrade. The energy stored per meter in the track is dash joule per meter. See energy stored, elastic energy stored. Actually, you have to remember this formula. Stored elastic energy has got a formula. Elastic energy is equal to half into strain square into area into length. This is actually total energy. Okay. So sometime we write half into stress into strain that is for actually energy density. This total energy. This is volume and this is the energy density. Okay. So So what we get here Let us let us write this see we have to find out <clears throat> energy stored per meter so energy stored per meter e 
by L will be half into area into strain square. Strain square. Now let us find out what is strain. We know Young modulus is equal to stress by strain. Okay, A by A. That's it. That is actually stress by strain. Okay, delta L by L. Okay, so you know here length delta L by L again can be written in terms of linear expansion coefficient alpha into delta T. Right? Alpha into delta T. Actually, so area into strain, we will be able to write it here. Okay, I have actually written the formula a little wrong here. There will be young modulus half into young modulus into strain square So that's why okay. Just let me clarify this Energy stored will be actually half into Stress into strain. This is energy per unit volume stress into strain Okay, so now we know stress is equal to Young modulus into strain. Strain. From here we can actually write. See, if we put it here, so energy per unit volume, energy density, half into y into. In place of stress, I'll write this. Strain square. Okay. So if I want to have length, energy per unit length then i have to write half into area into this young modulus into strain square i'm sorry for the mistake in the previous page okay so we have this formula actually okay so half into a into y into strain square now we'll put the values here okay let us put the values here So we have got half into Young modulus is 10 to the power 11 Newton per meter square. Area is 10 to the power minus 2. Strain we have got alpha and delta T. Delta T is 10 and alpha is 10 to the power minus 5. So it will be actually 10 to the power minus 8. So if we do the simplification this will be actually 10 by 2 so this will be actually 5 and this is in joule per meter so here the answer will be 5 okay so guys here the bottom point is that you have to remember what is the energy density stored in the elastic uh, material okay elastic material or elastic energy Density elastic energy density is equal to half into stress into strain and from there you can actually convert it into stress or strain Okay uh, in the terms of young modulus and here you had been asked to find out the energy stored per unit length So in that case you just multiply Area on the other side and keep this length Down the energy. Okay, so that's we have solved this problem Okay, so now We'll solve the last problem for this session. So this question says, in an electric circuit, a cell of certain EMF provides a potential difference in an electric cell sorry in an electric circuit a cell of certain emf provides a potential difference 
1.25 volt across a load okay let me just draw a cell sorry there is a series register right so the voltage drop across this is given actually okay potential difference across this resistor okay this is emf and this suppose there will be internal resistance small r okay so how so the question is in an electric circuit a cell of certain emf provides a potential difference of this 1.25 volt across a load resistance of 5 ohm however it provides a potential difference of 1 volt across a load of 2 ohm the emf of the cell is given by x by 10 volt so you have to find out what is x so guys you know this e minus i into r if the current in the circuit is i and small r is the internal resistance then this is actually i into r okay so this ir is the voltage given here let me write it here in, uh, on the right hand side so this is 1.25 for for resistance resistance 5 volt okay 5 volt so from here you know what we can write first of all let me write what is i so i will be actually e by small r plus r so from here r so this is the current okay so so the voltage drop 1.25 for so voltage will be actually v potential difference 1.25 can be written as e by 5 plus r into 5 this is suppose equation number one or we can do one thing we can simplify a little bit so 5 e will be equal to this into okay so this is 1.25 into small r this is equation number one and for another resistance 2 ohm 2 ohm the voltage drop is 1 volt so 1 volt can be written as e by 2 plus r okay into 2 therefore i can write 2e is equal to 2 plus r okay so this is equation number two say so we have got two equations one is 2 e is equal to 2 e is equal to 2 plus small r and here 5 e is equal to 6.25 plus r okay i hope yeah i hope i have written correct 1.25 r yes this is a 1.25 into r okay now i have to find out small r we have to solve for small r so let me multiply 5 here multiply 2 here and then subtract so this will give you 0 this side so here i have multiplied 10 so this is 10 plus 5 r here it is 2 so 12.5 12.5 and here it is 
2.5 r okay let us take this difference so this difference will be actually minus 2.5 minus okay this will be plus plus 2.5 r okay if we just take the difference so this is see then r is equal to r is equal to 2.5 by 2.5 which is equal to 1 ohm okay so i have got r we had this equation right let us put it here and then we will get so 2e is equal to 2 plus 1 okay 2 plus 1 smaller is this so e is equal to 3 by 2 that means you know that means this or we can write 15 by 10 here if we compare this x by 10 with 15 by 10 then x will be equal to 15 okay so this is the answer for this question thank you so we'll stop it here for today with this next we'll take some other paper 2021 but we'll take some other a paper of some other day 20 second we have done 22nd july we'll go for the august sessions papers okay in the next session so thank you for your presence